Okay. Uh, why it is called a screw theory? Let me do another picture. So we have a body like this. We want to go here. We can represent this motion like rotation and translation. It's one way to go. It's like, first of all, we do one operation of rotation, for example, or translation, and then another kind of. Or we can do it simultaneously. Let me just show you uh, a part of this um, material in the book of Kevin Lynch. So here there is a third chapter about rigid uh, body dynamics. And uh, we need to take a look right here. So we can think about it as rotation and then translation on the left. Or we can find such a point right here and the motion will be just rotation around this point. So we can describe this motion if we will, ta we will, ta we will tell where is, the it, where is the position of this point and what is the velocity. So here, mm -hmm. this is a planar example of screw motion. So it looks like oh, I have a mm, uh, screwdriver and since it's planar case, it, it looks like just a rotation. But in order to describe this kind of motion, I need just uh, to denote where the axis of rotation and what is the angle of velocity. So the displacement can be therefore be parameterized by three coordinates. Beta, so here, the, the angle and the coordinates of, of this point, S x and S y. So here, the displacements can be therefore parameterized by uh, those three numbers. Okay? It's one way to go, but also there is another way to represent this screw body motion. So we can express it in terms of velocities. We can, uh, by inspecting this, equa uh, this picture, we can say that the, um, uh, we can uh, express it as uh, rotating about S with unit angle velocity one. And we can say that in the very initial point of time, it has a linear velocity only for the x component, and um, it equal to the the distance multiplied with angle of velocity. Since it's one radian in this particular example, and here you can see it's like the grid. It's like one and two. It's unitless example. So let, you see they are the grid. So the value here equal to two, two boxes. So here um, uh, a point of origin uh, uh, moves at uh, units per seconds initially. And look, so here the velocity equal to the uh, vx equal to the 2 because it's uh, uh, lever times angle velocity, just like in the examples that we already covered. And for the y, it will just equal to 0 because there is no y component for now. And we can package all this together and we will represent a, a vector with 
uh, angle velocity and with a linear velocity. And it's going to represent a screw axis. And if you multiply it with the uh, magnitude of a displacement, for example, the P over 2, you will be left with this notation, like 1 times P over 2 will be just P over 2, 2 times P over 2 will be P, and 0 times P over 2 will be just 0. And this is nothing else as a twist for planar motion. So P over 2 is the angle velocity, and P with a 0 is a linear velocity. So here, this thing is just an axis of rotation. And we can represent the whole motion. And it's like it moves along around this axis. And here we have just pure rotation. But a general body motion also could be represented by this concept. But in this case, it will be the vector not with the three entities, but with the six entities. But the concept is the same. So this thing is the representation of the axis of the motion. OK? So there was a, a guy, Mozart, and he stated a theorem that uh, any uh, element of a uh, special with Euclidean group could be uh, described as a pure instantaneous uh, rotation around axis plus a pure translation along this axis. So we have an axis and we have a rotation around it and translation along it. And this is, it looks like a um, screwdriver, the motion of screwdriver. And this is why it's called a screw theory. It's like a meta metaphor. So maybe it's hard to imagine, and this is why I started with this example. I guess this, that one is easier to understand. 